it. Congrats on 50th anniversary. Yes, thank you. Um, we wanted to ask everybody, like, what do you remember about your first, very first day or very first episode? Yours was seven years ago wow. to the day, Yes, right? happy yes, anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary. I celebrated yeah. seven years yesterday. My crew actually reminded me. Nice. And uh, my first day was very interesting. <laughs> I was in the shower getting ready to, you know, bathe myself for my first day of work of Days of Our Lives. And my wife comes to the shower door and says, there's a fireman at the door. He says we have to evacuate our house because there's brush fires coming into Porter Ranch and we have to leave the house. Really? That was my first day. I drove to work while my family drove the other way away from my house. I didn't know if I was coming home to a house or not that wasn't going to be burned down. And that same day, James Scott did offer his house to me. I just met him that day. He was like, well, Eric, you know, you can just come in and, you know, your family can move in with me. Oh. Like, What's your name again? He's like, I'm James, and I've been more than happy to have your family in my house. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is the nicest place in the world. So that was my first day. Okay. How about you? Mine. Was, I love mine. Mine. Who was well, your scene with? What did you do? My first day was, obviously, I came on the show, and I don't, if you don't know, I was on crutches. And um, someone knocked on my door, and it was a screen door, and I went to the door, and there was this gentleman standing there with this full beard, and he said his name was Marty. And I went, okay. And this had been the first kind of introduction that Maggie had with uh, someone other than Hank, because her parents had died, so she kind of was by herself on this farm, you know. So, yeah, he didn't seem to notice her crutches, he just kind of looked past that and looked at, at her. So yeah, that was my first day. It was kind of nice. That's it was nice. very nice. So wait, was yes. Marty Marty or was Marty somebody Marty else? Marty was Mickey Horton. Exactly. Yes, That's but he a, had an see, MH. I remember that. He had an MH on his belt buckle, and he just made up this name, uh, Marty Hansen. Okay. He had his Instead initials of, on his belt buckle? Yeah. He was a, That's I guess awesome. he was I gotta a, get that. <laughs> yeah, Christmas, Christmas so you can remember out. who you yeah. are. <laughs> things rem do things remember? Yeah. Do they do things like that? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> belt buckle? There you go. I rode that Bronco. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Okay. <laughs> that might be the end of the interview right Whoa. there. Right? That's that's girl. Girl. <laughs> Mic drop. Okay. Exactly, it's already dropped. Okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> Boom. Um, so, so let's talk about some of the stories going on right now sure. that are airing right now. Yeah. Of course, there's kind of a little, you're kind of leaning back into Teresa, so to speak. <laughs> Literally and figuratively <laughs> leaning back into But Victor's sticking his nose in there, which means Maggie's going to get pulled into things. Talk about just the dynamic we're going to see. It's just a fun little soapy, awkward dynamic going on in that mm -hmm. household right now. Because mm -hmm. you have you have Maggie, who's who's tolerant and understanding. Then you have Victor, who just wants to see Teresa thrown out off a cliff. And you have Brady, who's completely conflicted about the mother of his child, but also can't help you know, remember what she did to his to his, to his father. So yeah, I mean, it's it's and great. It's Maggie's great because there's no clear yeah. path. There's no right. blueprint for yeah. what's going to happen. Exactly. And as fans saw last week on the show, things wow. can change in an instant. I hate you. Let's make love. You know, <laughs> we're, we're going to assume that Teresa's not going anywhere because you know Victor tried to kick her out. Brady's well, going to come to her defense, right? As soon right? as you make an assumption, though. You know, yeah, there things. you go. We throw you a boomerang. And I honestly, yeah. And with the 50th celebration here, I think the writers have thrown, they got a ton of boomerangs in their arsenal. And they yes, want, sir. they're treating the audience uh, with, with some real respect in the sense. They're, they're not spelling things out that easily. Mm -hmm. um, they're leaving a little bit to the imagination. And just when you think you know what's going on, oh, you know, because audiences, audiences are smart. Yeah, you know they 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 want to be they want to be fooled they want to be tricked, mm -hmm. and I think daytime is a, is interesting in, in that time in, in today's day. Well, how much what, is what am I saying? I was, how much is that? <laughs> a you know what I mean. How much is that a conflict for Maggie? What's going on? Because Victor's definitely being really hard on well, Teresa. Well, Victor has always had this edge to him, and Maggie wants to soften him up a little bit. Of course, she knows she can't, but she has a soft spot for Brady. Uh, she's not sure about Teresa yet. Um, she. Because Brady is kind of, she knows, she sees that he's falling for her. And she's a little concerned about it, you know. And um, she's going to have to straighten her up, you know, before she's completely convinced that this is the, this is the girl for him. Mm -hmm. Teresa and Brady, they've always enabled each other's bad behavior. Exactly. So, and, and she sees yeah. that train coming. She's, she, she's lived I've that been train, there. So. I've been there. I've done the alcohol storyline. I've done the, you know, the uh, substance abuse. And it's like... Oh, I see it coming. And she's a little manipulator, Teresa, and, and Brady is, is he's so kind and sweet and he's, he's vulnerable. Willing yes. It's and he's, silly. He's been 
and Without spongy. For a while. <laughs> and moldable <laughs> and flexible and and so okay. cute. <laughs> and that's what's most and important. And that's the most important God, thing. God, I just hope I stay cute. Yeah. Um, what about Maggie and Caroline and Victor? I mean, there mm. seems like they're always sort of dancing around they something. Love well, what it is is I know that Victor and Caroline are Bo's parents. So there's the rational part of, of Maggie is that that's always going to be there. There's nothing she can do about that. And I can never give Victor a child. So I have to be the bigger person. Uh, and I own a restaurant. I have my own, you know, I've established myself. And he knows who I am and he knows I love him dearly. And I love Caroline too. That's the thing. It's, it's quite a quandary because uh, the three of us, I think we genuinely like each other uh, as characters and in, in real life, so it's um, it's interesting to play. And so that kind of continues? It's, gee, Look I don't know. Look at you with your shovel, you're just digging. I know, isn't right? she? Yeah, she's well, slide. I don't know, I just don't know. You know I mean, we can't tell. You know that, you know, but, I but it's, listen, I think, you know, uh, Bo is there, and, and so, you know, you would think, yes, it would continue. I think Victor, okay. he's falling hard for you. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Okay, we we were both at the. I saw you. I think we, I saw both of you. We were yes. at the fiftieth party yes. last weekend. Yes. You were you were doing some stage work. Oh my God! <laughs> is, is he amazing? Oh, he's no, amazing. No, no, no. He's so amazing. I think that's the first amazing. time I've actually ever seen you live. Like I've seen you on like oh. video and stuff. Oh God! But here's here's my question. It's a very technical question. Oh good. When you're doing the pelvic thrust, <laughs> is it about foot placement? Is it about the arch at the back? What what makes a good pelvic thrust? Because you oh, were you were working goodness. it up there. Well, here's here's the deal with the pelvic thrust thing, okay? And my and everybody I've ever performed with. If you got it thrusted, honey. If you got it thrusted. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. When I when I did when I <laughs> can't even get out the words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I played I played Elvis for four years on on Joseph, and he made <laughs> Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I well, all I knew about Elvis at the time was I gotta thrust my hips around, right? That boy, you gotta yeah, you gotta do that a lot. <laughs> and sure enough, it, it kind of stuck. So whenever I sing anything. I just have to move my hips. It's just kind of connected. Exactly. I sing a note and the hips move. Okay. That's it. And it's kind of bothered. And my wife is like, can you just put those away for a minute? No. And you we were saying, You can't sing a go, ballad and go, go, go. The audience was eating it up. They of course were, they were. They were loving it. So the, I, well, I didn't purposely do it. I'm sorry if I offended anybody. No, you didn't. I did right. the opposite. Did I hurt anybody? <laughs> did I thrust anybody off the stage? I don't know. Heart palpitations, maybe. Oh, I don't know. We get sued next week. Woo! All right. That, on that note. Okay.